Hello guys, how you doing? I'm back with another little tech review of some of my vlogging gear and we're at the beach in Townsville on the Strand at sunset. Absolutely beautiful place for a little sit down and chat about tech. This is my Panasonic G85 and I've had this camera a few months but I'm actually going to send it back and um, return to Canon DSLRs and I'll tell you all about why that is. But first of all, let's have a, a little look at the camera itself. It is a 16 megapixel micro four thirds camera. It is in the DSLR style, so it's a little bit bigger than some of their other cameras, but you do get some extra features for that. You have a, um, a microphone port, which is really handy um, if you do any kind of video, but particularly if you're a vlogger. It's got a nice chunky grip here, weighs about 450, 500 grams. I've got it here with the, um, the kit lens, which is a 12 to 60 uh, in micro four thirds, which in full frame terms is a focal length of 24 to 120. So it's a really nice walkabout uh, lens, good range from pretty wide to reasonably telephoto. And if you're thinking about getting this camera, definitely get it bundled with a kit lens because this is a great lens for only 100, $150 more definitely worth getting nice and sharp for photos really good for for video typical kind of Panasonic G series controls you've got um, dual control wheels there so I have them set up for for shutter and aperture in manual mode you got your mode dial on there which has got the usual um, PASM and a couple of custom options and um, creative scenes which I think Panasonic has far too many of and then this dial over here is um, your drive mode. So you've got single photo, burst, and this is a pretty fast camera. Um, and then you've got these 4K photo modes, which to be honest with you, this is one of the issues I've got with this camera. It, it's laden with features, but I have found that I have not used 4K photo mode at all. Um, so it might be something which you find useful, but I know in a marketing, um, material they make a huge deal about this but quite frankly it's not something that I've personally found useful. On the back we've got fully articulated screen there and it's a touch screen as well which is really nice and you, you expect that these days. You've got a um, very nice electronic viewfinder here I think it's like 2.36 million pixels quick refresh rate nice and big as well so I've really appreciated that more so for the stills photography. I, I do use this for video and stills and uh, I found that viewfinder to be very, very good. It does slow down a bit and get grainy uh, at night time on it in low light, which, which you'd expect. But um, it, it is overall the, one of the best viewfinders that I've, I've used. Um, on, the, on the back here, we, we've just got the, the typical DSLR style control. So you've got ISO, you've got your focus selector, white balance, You've got your playback, display, and a bunch of function buttons as well. I don't really want to go into too much detail about all the nitty gritty, because this is not a brand new camera. It's been out for like a year or something. And um, no doubt there's probably a successor on the way in, in, within the next year. Um, so you can dig into YouTube and, and Google and find all of them stuff like that. Um, this is a, um, a useful switch here though. This lets you go between manual focus, which we'll talk about in a moment, and the different um, single and auto focus modes. You've got the memory card slot on the side there that, that is uh, very nice to have because typically in cameras of this price range, you find that they get chucked into the, the bottom with the battery compartment. And then in the battery, you've got this little fella here, and uh, he's pretty good actually. This camera does have a sort of a, a power save mode as well, which is pretty good. I couldn't quote you any figures, but all I would say is that I've never run short of battery on a shoot. I do have a spare, which I have gone to occasionally, but I've never been let down by battery, which is a nice thing. So why am I getting rid of this camera and returning to the world of Canon DSLRs, especially when so many people these days, particularly video creators like me, are going to the Panasonic or Sony mirrorless cameras. Well, it's no great surprise, and I don't think that this little chat is gonna sort of blow you away with any uh, bombshells, but the autofocus on this fella 
is not good for video. I just can't trust the autofocus at all. I, I come from Canon and I've been spoilt with dual pixel AF. If you're a Sony person, then they've got very good phase detect for video as well. But this guy, he's using just contrast and um, very, very quick for photography, point to point, bang, bang. But for video, the continuous autofocus, the tracking, it's just not there. You can't trust it. There's all kinds of modes. I've tried them all and I haven't really noticed much difference between any of them. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in here after the fact and talk a little bit more about this G85 video autofocus because I feel like I bagged it out a little bit, which is what most of the reviews online do. But in all honesty, it's not so bad that it's completely useless. Take a look at this footage that I filmed the other day. For example, this is from a drone comparison video that I did. I was using the autofocus and in P exposure mode, so the camera was taking care of shutter speed and aperture and ISO, and I've got to say that the G85 did really, really well. There was barely any noticeable focus hunting, so don't go ahead and think that it is so bad that you couldn't use the camera in this way for vlogging. Now I would add though that this video was obviously filmed in very good light so the camera would have been selecting a narrow aperture which means a big depth of field therefore it's a lot easier for it to auto focus. Uh, if you're in low light it's going to select a wider aperture, a smaller depth of field and that's much more challenging for it to hold focus. So it's not that it is terrible it's just that it isn't as good as the best of the best from Canon and Sony. The, the saving grace of this camera is that the manual focus uh, is actually pretty cool because what you can do is you can you can have it in manual focus but then you can use the touch screen to select your focus point and it will it will just set that point like an autofocus point it won't track so it's not in autofocus it's in manual but it's just a really handy way to set your focus and then and then you're good to go but in vlogging what you want to do is you want to go from this situation to this and you can use that little focus trick that I was talking about before with the manual point, but it gets really, really fiddly and you're sort of like there and, you know, it doesn't flow well and the, the sponta spontaneity of vlogging. So you're really back to autofocus. And as I said before, it's, you just can't really trust it. It's, it's so unfortunate because there's so much to love about this camera. And yet that autofocus issue I hate to say it, but you're probably going to be disappointed, which is a real shame because the image quality is fantastic. Um, no anti-aliasing filter, so your photos and your videos are nice and sharp. The colors are great. Don't believe what people tell you about Panasonic colors. They're great out of camera. They're great if you want to shoot Cinelite D, which is a flatter profile and, and grade in post, you can do that. It's such a flexible tool and people are right when they talk about this as being a bit of a budget G GH4. It really is. It, it doesn't do the crazy high frame rates, but it shoots 4K. Not that I've used that. 1080p is fine for the stuff that I do. I'm cool with that. I don't have the, um, a computer that's really good enough to edit 4K efficiently. Um, so that isn't really a, a thing for me. It's a great camera. It's just not the right camera for me and I will be buying the newly announced Canon SL2 or uh, 200D as it's going to be called here in Australia. That should be out any moment now by the end of July hopefully. So I'll do a video when I go and pick that one up. Um, but I think that's going to do what I need it to do. It's uh, not that expensive a camera. I've got the wide angle lens already for vlogging and it's got the dual pixel AF. I will miss some things from the Panasonic but unfortunately that autofocus issue, it's a bit of a deal breaker for me. But that was just my opinion on the G85. Uh, let me know in the comments um, if you're a user of this camera, what you think about the points that I've raised. If, if you're considering it, um, don't let me put you off, but I hope that my insight was of some use to you. And otherwise, give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't. I do family vlogs and a little bit of vlogging tech gear stuff as well. I'll see you soon. Bye. I just realised that I didn't introduce my friend Adam, who's been filming this, <laughs> who you can see on the, uh, the GoPro shot there. Like that. <laughs> Thanks Adam. Um, 
just in case you're wondering who that guy is. <laughs> I should have introduced him at the start. That's it, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>